Despite of what you might have read on the internet, you can use a large light modifier with a small light source. So this little speed light will happily fill this large softbox as long as you're sensible and realistic with what it's capable of doing. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers apart from my hand-painted background. In this video, I'm going to create some beautiful low-key images using nothing more than a single speed light and a large softbox in my small home studio. And the low-key bit really matters because with low-key, I like to get my light source really close to my subject and that does away with the main problem of a speed light, which is its relative lack of power. So with that said, I think we should get a light set. But whilst I'm doing that, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. So let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. Oh, let's turn the light on. There you go. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Jade. Jade's going to be the model for this photo session. And I'm going to start with my light way back over here, which for a low key image might not be the right place. And in fact, it means I have to have my flash set to full power. It is just a speed light, remember. So let's see how this looks. Okay, Jade, quick little test photo. Here we go. And from back here, well, the light is doing a good job. It's lighting Jade correctly, but it's also lighting the background exactly how I'm seeing it. The shadows are nice and soft because it's a big light source, but this isn't a low key image. So in fact, the position I want to put my light for a low key portrait is really close. And I do mean as close as you can reasonably get it. This close to Jade has a couple of advantages. Firstly, it means that to get my F8 aperture, I'm now using 1 8th power on the speed light. So that's a good thing. Also, the light this close to Jade means that the background is going to appear relatively darker than it did before. And of course, that's what we're after for a low key image. However, a large softbox like this, this is not a good place to put it, but let me show you why. Okay, Jade, quick little test photo, here we go. Although I'm getting nice even lighting on Jade, what I'm actually getting is most of the softbox below Jade's eye line, which means most of the light is coming up from below. Not a great look. So what I'm going to do is actually raise the light up really quite high. So most of the softbox is above Jade's head, but I'm not going to stop there because there's one more thing I'm going to do and that's add a very slight tilt to the softbox like so. Now that's not going to affect the direction of the light because it comes out pretty much at 180 degrees from the surface of the softbox. But what it will do is remove this part of the softbox from the framing of my image. It gives me a few more options when it comes to taking the photos. It might adjust my exposure. Let's just take a test photo and we'll see how it looks. Here we go. So this time we have much better lighting on Jade. Now the shadows are all heading in the right direction. We have that lovely low key feel. It's really dark, but there's still highlights in there. And this is a great place to take some photos. I'm really happy with this. The low key lighting looks really good. So I think we're all set. So Jade, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's take a few photos. Here we go. see low-key images as black and white photos but they don't have to be you can have low-key color images as well but for this session I think what I'm going to do is probably go somewhere in the middle and have a, a low-key muted color image the second setup is this, which if you're looking at it and thinking, well, that's the same as the first setup, guess what? You're absolutely right. It is exactly the same. But I am going to change one thing, and that is the direction that the softbox is pointing. Because at the moment, it's pointing towards Jade, which makes sense. But I can feather the light. And feathering the light is just another way of saying turning it. Jade, I'm going to turn this around. Here we go. So now I'm pointing the light towards the background. Uh, Jade, can you see any of the white of the softbox? Yep. Now, if Jade can see the white of the softbox, light will still reach Jade. So, how much light is the question? Well, let's take a meter reading and find out. 
The chances are it's not going to be that dissimilar to what it was before, but it's always worth double checking. And once again, I'm going to get my flash meter and point it at the light source I want to meter. And I've lost a stop of light by doing that, so I just need to increase the power of my flash up to one quarter power, get it back to F8, and now we can take a little test photo like this. Okay, Jade, here we go. Quick little test photo. And what I'm getting here is low key lighting on Jade in as much as there's lots of shadows, but really all I've done is just light the background and now I've gone away from low key lighting. So actually what I'm going to do is turn the softbox not towards the background, but away from the background. I'm still going to make sure that Jade can see some of the white of the softbox. Jade, yeah. can you see the white of the softbox? Great. So in theory, I shouldn't need to re-meter this because the same amount of light that was reaching Jade before is reaching her now. And I could double check or I could just take a test photo, which is what I'm going to do. OK, Jade, here we go. Quick little test photo. And sure enough, I've got the perfect light on Jade and the background, well, it's completely disappeared because now none of the light is reaching the background. And this feels low key. And that's really all there is to this. Feathered light away from the background gives us a nice dark background. I think we're ready to take a few photos. Jade, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Asking Jade to sit on a chair does limit some of the poses she can do, but there is an advantage, particularly when the lighting is position critical. So as you can see through my viewfinder, the light's not moving and Jade isn't moving much either, which means I get a consistent result image after image. For the final look, I'm actually going to take the light and move it ever so slightly backwards. In fact, pretty much as far back as I can get it here. And I'm going to ask Jade just to stand so she's roughly lined up with the front edge of the softbox and looking towards the camera direction like that. Now, this is going to change our low key effect quite dramatically because it should give me a lot more shadows and low key is all about shadows. It's also going to change the light output a little bit because I've moved the light. So I'm going to get my flash meter. And if you're using a flash meter, remember, point the flash meter at the light source you want to meter. So it's this one here. Let's see what we get. So I am roughly the same power. We haven't changed much to get the F8 aperture. Only the direction of light has changed, not the amount. But have a look at what the lighting does now. Spoiler alert, it's going to get better. Here we go, Jade. Quick little test photo. And what I get is light coming in from behind from that softbox, lighting Jade's hair and just the tip of her nose, which is not really what I'm after. <laughs> The fix for this is remarkably simple. And Jade being a professional model, she knew this already. I had to actually ask her to do this wrong. Jade, can you just look where you would look? So she's gonna turn towards the light ever so slightly. And as she turns towards the light, well, more light will reach her face. Let me show you. Here we go, Jade. Same lighting, same power, same everything. The only thing that's changed is the direction that Jade is looking in. And there's one more thing I can do to affect the results and that's change the feathering of the light. So at the moment it is fairly dark on the background, but maybe I want a little bit more light. And if I want a little bit more light on that background, I just need to feather it a little bit. And I do mean a little bit. It doesn't need a lot to have an impact. Let's have a look and see what that did. Okay, Jade, here we go. And before, well, it was pretty much black. Now we've got just a hint of light back there. That's helping to separate Jade out from that really dark background and removes the need for a second flash. And that's really all there is to this lighting setup. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Jade, are you ready? Let's go for it. Here we go. To 
With these images a little bit of movement, I've asked Sam to use the blower. It's actually on its lowest possible power, but even with that, there's plenty of movement in Jade's hair. And with the flash at a quarter power, it's still more than capable of freezing that movement thanks to its flash duration. As always, you'll find links to all of the gear I'm using today in the video description below, including the link to both the Flashpoint Speedlight and the Glow Softbox. But I've actually done something to both of these two to make this whole system a lot more efficient. Let's start with the Speedlight. It has a zoom head like most Speedlights do. I've changed the zoom head to 24 millimeters and I've pushed it as far back into the mounting bracket as possible. Why? Well, that is around this side because inside of the Glow Softbox is absolutely nothing. There's no inner diffuser in here because that would take away another stop of light. We're already running this fairly high in power as it is. I've also chosen the silver interior as well because that's going to give maximum efficiency for the light output for our little speed light. So there you go. That's the secrets inside the softbox. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.